People that say they don't need a budget. I don't get that. If you have a destination that you want to reach, like an address that you've never been to before, how do you get there? You plug it into the GPS and boom, like magic. Next thing you know, you're pulling into taco heaven. Is that really a place? Give me the address. I'll pop that into my GPS right now. We'll forget about this whole budget thing. Wait, what were we talking about again? Okay, I'm back. Budgets. Yeah, you need a budget if you want to reach your financial goals as fast as you can. Let's not even debate it. You wouldn't have clicked on this video if you weren't interested. I'm going to share with you some awesome, awesome things I learned from Marie Forleo in her new book. Everything is figure outable. You're going to start finding money you didn't even know you were wasting. Today, we're going to squash all of your excuses with the wise words of the one and only Marie Forleo, who I have loved for as long as I can remember. It's going to help you see the light. And by the light, I mean that beam of freedom that descends upon you when your debt hits zero. Okay, it doesn't exactly look like that, but it's even better because the results last way longer than that one little sheer moment of glory. The chapter that stood out the most to me in Marie's book is chapter four, eliminate excuses. I'm the queen of excuses. I'll make an excuse to make an excuse on top of that excuse. How's that working for you, Kate? Truthfully, not great. She gets right into it. She says two four letter words that will annihilate your BS excuses. Whew, already feeling attacked, but I should be because that's what I do too. She says, let's start by looking at your language and two common words that blur your ability to be honest with yourself. Those two four letter words are can't and won't. Think about how often people say some version of the following. So she's saying, I can't get up and work out every day. I can't find the time to get writing done. I can't forgive her for what she's done. She said, here's the problem. 99% of the time when we say we can't do something, can't is a euphemism for won't. What does won't mean? Won't means we're not willing. In other words, I really don't want to. You don't want to do the work. You don't want to take the risk. You don't want to get uncomfortable or be inconvenienced. It's simply not a big enough or important enough priority. Ouch. She says, before you disagree or find exceptions, which there are, humor me here, if you consider how this might be true in your own life, even a portion of the time, you'll break free from the vast majority of self-deceptive crap that holds you back. So she says, for example, go back to all those statements and replace can't with won't you'll discover something more honest. I won't get up and work out every day. I won't find the time to get writing done. I won't forgive her for what she's done. When you use the word won't, you feel and behave more powerfully. It's in your hands. Consider that guys. Can't versus won't. Can't is like this victim-y kind of, you know, inability to do things, but won't is you're choosing not to. You don't want to do it. And there's a big difference. Here are some quotes that stuck out to me. You take your life in your own hands and what happens? A terrible thing. No one to blame. Eric Fong. There are two kinds of people in the world. Those with reasons and those with results. Mm, which one do you want to be? If it's important enough, I'll make the time. If it's not, I'll make an excuse. So the first big excuse that people make all the time is I don't have the time. I've used it over and over and over again. But the truth is, like it just said, if it's important, you'll make the time. If it's not, you'll make an excuse. Uh, a big one for me is finding the time to exercise and eat better. Uh, let's go with the exercise part. I could easily say with my full-time job, single parent, YouTube channel, I don't have time to work out. The truth is you can always make time if it's something that you prioritize. I could get up earlier. I could not scroll as long on social media. There's, there's always ways to find 15 minutes, 20 minutes, up to two hours. She talks about in this book, finding two hours of time per day for yourself, which another reason you got to read this book. 
unbelievable. I, I'm really, I, I could talk about the book literally for hours, but for today, we're just talking about eliminating excuses. It's never about having the time, it's about making the time. One of the biggest budget excuses I get all the time is, I can't budget because I have an irregular income. So let's address that real quick. If you have an irregular income, what you wanna do is you wanna list your needs to wants, okay? So you need to cover the things that you need first. Secondly, you wanna budget your lowest case scenario, the lowest amount that you could possibly make and make your budget fit within that. Thirdly, you wanna create a hit list for the things that you wanna address should your number be higher. So say you have budgeted accordingly with the lowest number, your, your worst case scenario, if you will, and then you know that if you do make the extra money, you wanna pay off this credit card. If you do have the extra money, you wanna put it in a sinking fund. Whatever it is, then you go in that order, but that's the way to do it. Another huge excuse I hear all the time is I can't budget because my spouse or significant other won't get on board with me. So what? <laughs> wow, that just came across insensitive, but you can still do your best on your end. You're never, ever, ever going to control what other people do. The only person we can ever control is ourselves. And I know that is a lot easier said than done. Same even with the irregular excuse, right? That That is another thing that I just oversimplified that. And you're like, okay, well, it's harder than that. And it can be, but it doesn't have to be. And same thing with this whole thing about your your spouse. It sucks if they don't want to get on board with this because I know you're probably feeling really passionate about it. And you're like, ooh, I can see the results that could happen if we could just get on board together. But look, you're not changing anybody. You're never going to. You might, you might if you lead by example and they see the progress, but don't plan on it. Don't plan on it. You don't have to be responsible for their actions and their lack of interest in this, but you can still take the reins and still be accountable for what you can be accountable for and budget the heck out of what you're responsible for and get some results. Psh, forget about them. As Marie says, everything is figure outable. I love this expression, you guys, because it puts the power back into your hands. It makes you know that there's nothing you can't do. It's all figure outable. You have to just figure out the way. And when we're budgeting, there's a lot of times where we're thinking, there's no way I can do this. There's no way. I could have easily said that. As a single parent, I could have easily been like, there is no way I'm gonna pay off my car. There's no way I'm gonna ever be able to buy a house. Imagine, but I knew, as Marie shared, everything is figure outable. So you've got to figure out a plan and then you've got to execute. There is a way, don't think there isn't, there is. So now I'm going to give you an exercise to do that Marie gave me to do and it is going to open your mind to the possibility that you could have more time. The excuse of I don't have time is one that we can squash today if you're willing to do this, okay? This is what she recommends. It's a time audit. It says seven day time tracking. If not enough time is your main squeeze excuse, which is a lot of ours, track your time for the next seven days. She gives like a, a diagram of how to track it and be brutally honest and don't lie about what you're actually doing or minimize how much you're actually spending. For example, scrolling through Facebook, okay? You wanna actually give an accurate depiction of what you're actually spending every single minute on for seven days. I think that seven days is a great, a great time frame, but I think after a few days you would realize what this is actually meaning for you, okay? At the end of seven days, review your time log and take a look. What could you eliminate? There's always something to eliminate. And you guys know in my Kate method, if you've never seen the Kate method, I will leave that up here. Eliminate is one of my letters, the E in Kate. So this is, this chart right here made me feel sick. The opportunity cost of wasting your time. So opportunity cost is something I'm always thinking about. If you're 
spending your time on this, what are you giving up? What's the, what, what other opportunities could you have had with the same amount of time? Would you have had more bang for your buck? So listen to this. She says, today's unconscious cost. 30 minutes a day, fooling around on your social media. She actually uses a different word, but to keep it family friendly, I'm gonna not use that word. Total time spent per year. So if you're spending 30 minutes a day on your phone slash social media, total time spent per year is 182.5 hours a year or 22 full eight hour work days. <laughs> what you could have accomplished, she says, Michelle Obama like arms, built a brand new website and learned how to meditate. The second example, 60 minutes a day, today's unconscious cost. If you are spending 60 minutes a day on news, email, celebrity gossip, we're all guilty or some of us are at least guilty of a little bit of that. Total time spent per year, 365 hours a year or more blatantly put 45, 45 full eight hour work days. Do you know what you could have accomplished during that? Instead of 60 minutes of scrolling through gossip and time wasted, you could have written a draft for your first book. You could have launched a new revenue stream and you could have secured a raise or made a career change in that same amount. So you guys get the point, right? When you do this time audit, you're gonna be fully aware of how you're spending every second and it's going to be eye-opening and you gotta reevaluate. I'm sorry, the third example is watching 90 minutes of TV a day equals 68 full eight hour work days. You could have learned to speak conversational Italian, finished your degree and launched a profitable side business. I hope you get the point of what I'm trying to share with you. Your time is precious. Evaluate how you're spending every minute of every day and see where you can find the time to either budget or do something more productive with your time that would bring you closer to the goals that you're reaching for. I'm pretty sure that we don't realize how fast that time adds up and how much time we're wasting. Sunny Lenarduzzi, oh my gosh, she did this uh, visual of how many months she had left in her life for some reason, when I saw that sheet and she colored in, I'm not usually one for coloring in visuals, but when she colored in all the months she's lived so far and how many, in theory, she had left if she lived to a certain age. Oh my gosh, you guys. When you look at it like that, we gotta stop wasting our time. In summary, everything is figure outable. There's a way to reach any goal that you have if you're prioritizing it and you want it to happen, you can make it happen. I fully believe that. If you have not read this book yet, again, it's Marie Forleo, Everything is Figure Outable. I got it at the library for now, but I'm really thinking of getting it um, as a permanent member of my collection. I don't often buy books unless they really strike me as completely valuable and beneficial to my life, and I would say this does fit that category 100%. So if you want more about this information, pick up this book or even borrow it from the library also for free. Check it out. I think you will love it if this kind of thing interests you. If you like this content, you guys hit the thumbs up button. If you want me to go into more of this, let me know or you can just read it on your own. And then of course, if you find something interesting or you want to just talk with me about it, send me an email, leave my email down below if you feel like it. I just, I really found a lot of value in this book and I hope you do too. I'll also leave a link right to the book, right to Amazon if you wanna snatch it up real quick. And now I have one of the most important questions to ask you as a viewer. If you could take a moment, leave in the comments right now, what is your big, big, big elephant in the room, the big project, the big thing, that you are trying to figure out. What are you trying to make figure outable? And what is the excuse that's holding you back? What is that thing that you want to figure out and accomplish? And what is the excuse you're telling yourself that maybe after this video, 
you're going to squash. Let me know in the comments. I love hearing your personal situations and goals that you're working toward. And I think also it helps when other people read in the comments and they go, oh, that's my thing too. It, it's just helpful. I love our community, you guys, and I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. Have a great weekend, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Ah. Mm. Uh. Mm. Hey, boo. What? You want to say hi, K-Squad? Hi, hi, K-Squad.